Dwayne The Rock Johnson is riding his wrong with 7-Eleven. He said he stole from that same store when he was a teenager. And he wanted to make up for his crime. And he returned to his local 7-Eleven to make amends. He's writing some wrongs. Trying to pay it back. And try and make good. I need to redeem myself. And I just got to redeem myself. So one day I will have to go back and redeem myself. <laughs> go to a different 7-Eleven. If you're feeling guilty about it, what should you do to make up for stealing? I have been waiting decades to do what I'm getting ready to do now. What's going on here? Well, his society-shaped, God-given conscience, the work of the law written upon his heart, is accusing him of sin. It's as simple as that. As I was growing up as a teenager uh, in Hawaii, I used to get in trouble a lot, doing a lot of things I shouldn't have been doing, arrested multiple times. Yeah. And I felt like I need to redeem myself, so I went back to Hawaii. I have my 15-year-old daughter, Simone, with me. I'm like, honey, it's Sunday, it's our day off. We're gonna go to all these places that I did bad things. And I just gotta redeem myself. To, uh, walk to the gym every day when I was a freshman, right? So I walked in five miles. So everybody says, wow. you walk five miles. I literally had to walk five miles, right? So I walked five miles to the gym. Midway point to the gym is the 7-Eleven. I used to stop at the 7-Eleven, I swear to God, I swear to God, every day, and I used to steal a king-size Snickers bar. Every day? For energy. Well, I didn't have any money, right? So, of course, right? So that's what I did. I took every day for energy, king-size Snickers bar. Oh, wow. So I told my daughter, I said, you know what? I said, what if we went? Let's go back to the 7-Eleven. Let's just go in there. Let's just go grab a king-size Snickers. Let me literally put $500 down and just say, oh, here, thank you, and then go. She's like, all right, that's kind of cool, Dad. Let's go do that. So one day I will have to go back. If not yeah. that one, then a 7-Eleven. <laughs> And redeem myself. Go to a different 7-Eleven. This was back before I became who I am today. I have been waiting decades to do what I'm getting ready to do now. Hey, where's your Snickers? When I was 14 years old, every day I used to stop here at the 7-Eleven and steal a king-size Snicker bar because I couldn't afford to buy one. That was my pre-workout food. I did that for almost a year every day. I had to come back and buy every Snickers bar on those shelves. I used to steal a Snickers every day. We're doing that. That felt really, really good. In thinking that he can redeem himself, Dwayne Johnson is making the biggest mistake of his life. I mean, is it that simple? You just pay the store that you stole from. That doesn't even work in man's court, and it won't work on Judgment Day. Theft is just one sin. What about lying and blasphemy? How much will it cost to redeem ourselves from the sin of adultery or lust or fornication or hatred or murder? All the great religions are built on that deception. They think they can appease God's anger by religious or good works. These things may appease a guilty conscience. They may make us feel better about ourselves. That felt really, really good. But they won't save us from the anger of God. And if we reject his payment on the cross, we will have to pay for our own sins, and that will mean damnation. There will be hell to pay. Listen to Hebrews 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You're an atheist? Yes, I am. Do you think there's an afterlife? I don't know. I just feel like something's out there, you know, bigger than us. Talking about God, are you doing anything that could be morally displeasing to God? Relationships with women before marriage? You mean you're having sex? Yeah. You know that's wrong? Oh, yeah. What are you studying at school? Oh, I want to do prosthetics specifically, like fake arms and limbs, stuff like that. And yet you're an atheist. In my mind, I kind of want to get to the point where like, almost like a fake arm can substitute a real arm, like maybe like nerves and feeling versus just a substitute arm. Why don't you just leave it to make itself? Just leave a limb to make itself from nothing, like the fingers and the thumb and the blood and the tendons and the bone and all that. Just let it make itself, you know, like what an atheist believes, that everything made itself without a maker. I see you're talking with your hands. Do you know you do that? Oh, yes. Yes, you I'm express very... express yourself with your hands. Mm -hmm. Hands are so incredible. They grip so strongly, and yet they can be so gentle. You're expressing yourself with your hands. It was all subconscious. Mm -hmm. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you know what an atheist believes? And tell me if I'm wrong here, Dominique. Mm -hmm. An atheist believes the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. Nothing wasn't there was nothing in the beginning, but nothing was the creative mind 
that created everything, which is worse than insane because nothing can't create anything because it's nothing. Yeah, which I, I would agree with you on that sense of, I guess I haven't really looked into it deeply. We haven't even, thought very deeply. Yeah, I feel like the beginning of life is such, it, one, like we can't really go back in history and find out what actually happened. But anyone who reads Genesis chapter 1 goes back in time and reads, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Tell me this, have you ever done what most males do? You get an appliance and you don't read the instructions, they're annoying. You just try and put it together and when it doesn't come together then you look at the instructions. Mm -hmm. Do you do that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I do that too. Women don't do that because they like to read instructions, it seems. But that's what the whole of humanity has done with God's instruction book. We don't need to read the Bible, we know better and look at the mess the world's in. We're on the brink of nuclear war. Ever we look, there's chaos. Watch the news tonight. It's depressing. And it's because we haven't bothered to read the instruction book. Got a question for you. Are you afraid of death? Actually, no. You should be. You know why? Why? You should always be afraid of that which can kill you. And death is going to kill you. If you're not afraid, you won't do anything about it. But if you are, that fear will drive you to do something about it. Like if you're going to jump out of a plane without a parachute, Fear will make you put on a parachute. Fear is your friend, not your enemy, if you listen to it. Yeah, well, if I can counter you with that, I would be... I, I wouldn't say necessarily that I fear death, but I more invite it in a right. sense. I feel like, what's, what's the point of life if you don't have death to make you live it? I don't need sickness and cancer and pain and disease to make me appreciate health. Well, I don't need blindness to make me appreciate eyesight. I don't need deafness to make me appreciate the sound of birds in the morning. You know, the Bible says death is an enemy. Did you know that? And you're rolling over and letting the enemy just run all over you. You mentioned blasphemy before. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Um, bef before. Before what? Like, in the past, I have. Everything's in the past. This was back <laughs> before I became who I am today. If you're in court and you say, Judge, you robbed the bank, but it was in the past, he's going to say, oh, it was in the past. He's, gonna, he's not going to let you off. If you do something bad in your youth, you know, you steal or something, how can you make up for it? What should you do? If you're feeling guilty about it, what should you do to make up for stealing? I honestly think that there's no way to make up. Uh, well, you go back to the place you stole from and you, you, you give them some money or something. Would that make things right? I don't think that would... How would I put it? Like, materialistically, yes. But I feel like morally, like for me, it's, it's less about the action that you're doing and more about why you've chose to do that action. It might get rid of your guilt if you go back to a place you've stolen from. I'm thinking of The Rock. You've heard of The Rock, the actor? The, the, the wrestler. Yeah, the uh -huh. wrestler, actor. He used to steal in Hawaii from a store. He used to steal Snickers bars every day. Oh, boy. And he says he's been waiting for years to do it, but he went back and he purchased a whole stack of Snickers. He thought that would make things right. But it doesn't. It's like stealing from a bank and going back to the bank and saying, I've got some money for you, I'm giving back to you. Even if it's more, you'll still go to jail for theft. It doesn't wash away your crime in man's court. You think you're a good person. How many lies have you told in your life? That's the ninth commandment. Oh, man. I mean, that's, that's, like, that's like every other sentence, you know. <laughs> so what do you call someone who tells lots of lies? A liar. So what are you? I guess I'd be a liar. Have you lied and stolen? Oh, for sure. So you're a lying thief? <laughs> I was one. In the past? Yeah, in the past. <laughs> You've taken the holy name of God, the name that godly Jews won't even speak, it's so holy, mm -hmm. the one who gave you a mother and gave you life and used it in place of the filth word to express disgust. That's called blasphemy. Very serious in God's eyes. Appreciate your honesty. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Absolutely. Eben, you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty. As if Judgment Day was today or tomorrow? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Well, hopefully heaven. Well, the Bible says all liars love their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit God's kingdom. Do you remember the Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? I don't. Very famous. It's saying that God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a criminal that's murdered three women. He says, you have earned the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what's due to you. This is what we're paying you. And Dominic, sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. You're on capital punishment. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. Now, you've had a Christian background. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Um, it's been years, man. <laughs> you, you know, but you just don't value it because you don't understand it. You actually know. Was it going to church? No. 
You've heard of Jesus dying on the cross? I have. This will change everything if you can get a grip of this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law, Jesus came and paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said, it is finished just before he died. He was saying the debt is paid. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines, someone pays them, a judge will legally let you walk. Absolutely. He'll say, ah, oh, you're guilty, a lot of speeding fines, but someone's paid him, mm -hmm. you can leave. And he can do that which is legal. God can legally dismiss your case. He can take the death sentence off you. He can let you live forever legally all because Jesus paid that fine and full on that cross and then rose from the dead and defeated death and all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of those sins and it's a hard thing to do because you love your sins when's your last look at pornography oh recently <laughs> yeah recently we but, love it we're like but... moths to a flame so it's very hard for sin loving sinners to repent you need God's help and then you trust in Jesus like a trust a parachute if you're gonna jump out of a plane 10,000 feet why would you put on a parachute? You'd put it on because you don't want to die. Yeah. And your motivation would be fear. You don't want to hit the ground at 120 miles an hour on your face. In that respect, fear is your friend when that happens. It's making you put on a parachute. It's not your enemy, it's your friend. And Dominique, because I love you and I really do, I've tried to put the fear of God in you today and make you sweat a little and realize that sin is really serious and death is a terrible thing and hell is waiting for you, hoping you'll see that fear as your friend, not your enemy, because it'll drive you to the mercy of God where you'll find everlasting life. Man, this is so important. It's not just what you're gonna do for a job. It's not who you're gonna marry. I'm talking about where you're gonna spend eternity. Death seized on you tonight, and you weren't a Christian, you weren't born again, and your sins weren't forgiven. I'd weep my heart out, because I don't want anyone to go to hell. And if you can realize this is an earnestness in my tone, if you can hear that, it's motivated by love and concern, because I know what I'm speaking is, gospel truth it's reality you're going to think about what we talked about oh most definitely when are you going to repent and put your faith in christ every day i try this happens now and then it can come as a curveball so you've got to be ready they maintain that all is well that they're born again and they're trusting in jesus but you know there's not an ounce of evidence of regeneration so what do you do well this is what i do if i say to you we're going to jump out of a plane when are you going to put a parachute on? You say, every day I try. <laughs> no, no. You just say, now. I want to get right with God now. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Is that making sense? A hundred percent. So when are you going to get right with the Lord? Today. Today? Can I pray with you? Most definitely. Do you realize what you're doing? You're saying, God, I'm a sinner. You've, I've, I've been sinning against you. I need your mercy. I need to trust in Jesus. I need my sins forgiven. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let's bow in prayer. Father, I pray for Edwin that this day he'll find a place of genuine contrition, sorrow for his sins, and that he'll be born again with a new heart, new desires, and may he understand what you did on the cross. And this day pass from death to life, all because of your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you have a Bible at home? Uh, yes. Everything happens for a reason, you know, so like we cross paths. It wasn't like coincidental, you know. Like it was very interesting how God works and how he put you in my life to give me this message and I appreciate you and God.